Welcome to this Michigan Region 8 MCA training on building analytical reports for performance improvement purposes in the Michigan EMS data system. Here's today's agenda. We're going to start by reviewing some performance measures that the state of Michigan has developed around their EMS data system and that are accessible to you as an MCA user and you can track them within your MCA. Then we're gonna talk about the performance improvement cycle, as well as the concept of performance measure types and building a family of performance measures uh, for performance improvement efforts. We'll uh, spend the rest of the time today actually building some reports to support a family of performance measures that we're going to come up with. And then we'll schedule those reports for a monthly delivery. The state of Michigan has developed some EMS data system performance measures. These can be used for performance improvement purposes if you're trying to improve the performance of EMS personnel in their actual documentation efforts uh, as they're writing patient care reports. Michigan has about a dozen of these performance measures in several areas that have been recommended by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration. These areas of data system quality uh, are broken down into timeliness, accuracy, completeness, uniformity, integration, and accessibility. Uh, Michigan has measures for most of these areas. Uh, for example, here's the uh, timeliness performance measure for the state of Michigan. Uh, where they track how long it takes from the time an incident occurs to the time that a patient care report is submitted into the Michigan EMS data system. Uh, I'm going to scroll through the rest of the performance measures here that Michigan has just to give you a quick view of each of these. Uh, of course, um, if you watch this uh, video after it's recorded, you're welcome to pause on any of these to study it out a little more. Here's the accuracy performance measure. Uh, which is tracking how many errors and warnings are happening per record on imported data coming from third-party systems. The goal here is to have an overall uh, downward trend. Then there are several performance measures dealing with the completeness of data, uh, how often things are being recorded. So this is how often response mode to scene is being recorded how often a complete set of EMS times is recorded and how complete those sets are. And specifically looking here at the completeness of EMS times for transport calls, how often primary impression is recorded, how often the details of the scene, the incident location are recorded, how often cardiac arrest details are recorded, and how often stroke details are recorded on stroke calls. And another uh, completeness measure is how often at least one set of vital signs has been recorded on a patient care report. And the response to medications, how often response has been recorded uh, when administering a medication. They also track uh, uniformity measures. Uh, here's the measure for how many patient care reports have been submitted each month into the state system. Of course, they expect an upward trend here as agencies have been going live in the new system. And this is the number of agencies submitting patient care reports each month. I wanna show you how to find and run these same reports within the Michigan EMS data system. The charts that I showed you have actually been created by taking the, the raw data out of the reports in the Michigan EMS data system report writer, and then uh, putting those numbers into Excel to come up with charts. Let's take a look at where those reports are located. So I'm gonna log into the Michigan EMS data system using my own account. And I'll go up to the tools menu and choose report writer. In the report writer, in the shared reports section, I'll find a folder called data system performance measures. And all of these ones that start with DSP, M, A1, C1, C2, et cetera, are those performance measures uh, that I just showed you the charts for. Uh, for example, we could take a look at um, performance measure C1, which is response mode recorded. And uh, there are actually three reports in the report writer here that support that performance measure. 
Uh, one is the denominator, and then there are two reports that uh, make up uh, two components of the numerator on that uh, chart. So the denominator tells us how many patient care reports uh, we have in total that are uh, selected by this performance measure. And then these two numerator reports will uh, add up to tell us the actual performance out of that batch that's selected for the denominator. And so you can run these reports uh, and you'll get the numbers for your MCA. As we've discussed in previous trainings, uh, it's helpful to set up a criteria to uh, make these reports run more quickly, and that is to set the agency region to your region, region eight. There is already a criterion in here to indicate that agency region is not equal to the training region. So I can just update this existing criterion here and say agency region is equal to region eight and click save. This is just gonna make my report run faster. I only have access to records in region eight anyway, uh, so it's not really gonna change what I have access to, um, but it does speed up the performance of the report writer. So with that, I'll just generate the report and we'll see what we get. Okay, my report has run, and this has given me the denominator for performance measure C1 about uh, response mode being recorded on calls. What it's giving me is the performance for last month, or the denominator for last month, which was 82 uh, records. That's what I have access to in my particular account. Then I could also go ahead and run the, uh, the two numerator reports for C1. Uh, that cover eResponse 23 and eResponse 24. Those are the two data elements that we're uh, interested in. Each of those would give me a similar result. It would show me July of 2019, it would give me a count. Uh, and so you can take those reports and then uh, stitch those numbers together to get the numerator divided by the denominator and get an actual percentage of how completely those two data elements were filled out that month. So there are definitely a few manual steps to take here uh, in using these data system performance measure reports. Uh, we went as far as we could with uh, the Image Trend Elite system capabilities. Uh, that gives us the raw numbers, but it doesn't give us the nice charts or percentages. So then we've got to take those numbers to Excel to uh, actually build those charts that would give us something visual to look at and to track over time. Now, because you might want these to uh, come to you monthly, then I would recommend scheduling this report so that it would just come to you by email every month and you won't need to go into the system, manually run it, and wait for the results. Some of these reports do take a while to run, uh, a minute or two usually uh, for most users. And so getting it by email would be a great way to go. At the end of the training, we'll look at how to schedule a report for delivery by email. Let's talk about the basic performance improvement process. I'm sure you've all seen the PDCA cycle of performance improvement. You plan some uh, improvements that you want to make in your EMS system. You enact those improvements, and then you check the results to see if they actually um, gave you the results you were looking for. And then you take action on what you found there. You may make um, adjustments to your plan and then implement those adjustments and so on and you go around the cycle. Well, data is a really important component of this cycle uh, because you'll use the data in two areas. One is in the planning and the other is in the checking. You'll use data to figure out uh, what issues you want to address in your agency or MCA. And you'll use data after you've addressed an issue to check if the action that you took actually made a difference. So as you're working on performance improvements, we need to develop some reports in the system to help us with the planning and with the checking as we go through this cycle. As we develop performance measures, keep in mind that there are different types of performance measures that you can develop. One that's kind of considered the holy grail is to have outcome performance measures. Uh, say, for example, you wanted to track um, uh, stroke survival. 
And uh, so as an outcome measure, what you're looking at is, is the patient's final outcome from that stroke call. So regardless of what interventions you took uh, or how you responded, did the patient live or die? And can you make improvements in those outcomes so that more patients live and have a higher neurological function? Well, outcomes are the holy grail, and yet if we really want to do performance improvement, we need to include other types of measures because outcomes alone don't really help us to figure out how to get to that end result of having um, better, you know, more lives saved or, or better um, patient health. So we look at some other measures as well. A key area that we look at is process measures. Process measures are the things that measure how your agency is implementing a particular process that should affect the outcome. So the research may show that if you uh, take a stroke scale early on uh, for someone who is a suspected stroke patient, or that if you activate the hospital stroke system early on, then the research may show that that leads to better outcomes. So even if you don't have the outcomes themselves, you can measure the process that you have implemented and uh, make sure that everyone is actually following those processes that are um, most likely to result in the best outcomes. In addition to process measures, we can also have structure measures. Structure measures are about the way an agency is set up uh, as opposed to the actions that they perform, which are process measures. So a structure measure, uh, for example, you might measure how many of your ambulances have a pediatric blood pressure cuff on the ambulance. That's part of your structure. And the hypothesis would be that if they have a pediatric cuff, then it's more likely that they will follow the process of taking blood pressures on pediatric patients and that that would lead to an improvement in the outcomes of those pediatric patients. So that's how those three levels build upon each other, and you can develop measures for any of those three levels. But there is one more type of measure that you should consider, and those are balancing measures. Balancing measures are used to make sure that when we make one change to the structure or to a process, that we don't cause other unintended bad consequences to happen. For example, we may want to change our process for responding to cardiac arrests and do something that the research has shown will improve cardiac arrest outcomes. That's great. We can measure that process change. We're doing that new thing more often on our cardiac arrest patients. That should lead to better outcomes. However, if that new thing also causes us to spend uh, an extended period of additional time on the scene, and, and delays the time it takes to get the patient to the hospital, then we could actually have a scenario where we're doing this good new thing, but it's resulting in worse outcomes for the patients because of this unintended other consequence that's happening, like that we're not getting them to the hospital as soon as we were before. So balancing measures are really important to have in this mix. So whenever you take uh, upon you a performance improvement uh, initiative, you're going to develop performance measures around that initiative. You won't just have one measure, you'll have a family of measures, and they'll touch on these different levels here. Okay, so let's uh, practice with that. Let's say that we wanted to uh, develop some performance measures around the topic of lights and sirens use during the response to the scene. So there's been some research that has shown that um, lights and sirens use may actually have a negative impact in causing more crashes. And that if we can go silent, uh, we may actually uh, improve the safety of our response without having a big negative impact on the timeliness of the response. So if you were going to develop some measures around lights and sirens use, uh, then you would want to consider the different types of performance measure reports that you could build that would track those different aspects um, of lights and sirens use. So first of all, as a foundational thing, we may want a data system performance measure, just like the state of Michigan has. So I'm going to say that we'll have a data system performance measure um, using that existing 
using that existing report that Michigan has developed, which is uh, whether or not lights and sirens uh, use um, is recorded. If you're gonna measure how often you're using lights and sirens, then you need this foundational measure that tells you how often it's actually being recorded. If it's being left blank on 50% of your calls, then you really can't be confident about how many calls lights and sirens are being used on. So that gives us a foundational measure from the data system performance perspective. Okay, we can also um, come up with a uh, process performance measure here, and that would be uh, lights and sirens use um, during response. So out of 100 calls, uh, how many of those calls used lights and sirens? That's gonna give us that lights and sirens usage rate that we can track over time. And we may, for example, want to uh, make that rate go down, that we're using lights and sirens less often. Uh, what's the outcome that we expect? Well, if we, the research is showing that if we use lights and sirens less, we should have fewer uh, crashes in our response. So we could look at an outcome measure of uh, delays due to um, ambulance crash. We could have a report that measures the number of ambulance crashes that we're having over time and see if that goes down the way we would expect it to. Okay, so there's a process and an outcome measure, but I also mentioned balancing measures. Well, there are a couple balancing measures that we could consider here in regards to lights and sirens use. One would be a response time measure. So if we reduce lights and sirens use and then we see a big increase in how long it takes us to get to the scene, that may be of concern to us. So we'd want that balancing measure on response time. Uh, another example of a balancing measure that we could track would be um, delays uh, due to traffic. So if we turn off lights and sirens, but then that causes us to have lots of delays responding to the scene because of traffic, we're having a hard time getting through the traffic, through the intersections, around all the cars, then that's a balancing measure that we could track to make sure that we're not seeing a big increase in traffic delays as we uh, reduce lights and sirens use. So there's an example of how we can create a family of performance measure reports that all revolve around this one topic uh, in this example, lights and sirens use during response. Okay, let's try building one of these reports. So we had several ideas here. And uh, let's go ahead and take this um, process measure here, lights and sirens used during response to scene. Let's see if we can build a report that tracks that for us. So I'm gonna switch back over to the Michigan EMS data system. And of course, we already have something from the Michigan data system performance measures that talks about um, lights and sirens use. And so we can actually use that report as a basis for building this new report. The existing report uh, for performance measure C1 about uh, response to scene, uh, we could actually use that as the denominator for this new report that we're gonna build. So that's great. Uh, then we gotta figure out our numerator. In other words, out of all the calls that we've gone on, how many of them had lights and sirens um, versus not lights and sirens? Well, we can start again with one of the Michigan reports this one about eResponse.24, which is uh, additional response mode indicators. I'm gonna bring this report up and I'm gonna take a look at the criteria for this report. This has already been built for us so we can springboard off of this. I'm gonna change agency region to region eight just for performance. Uh, if you're gonna schedule this report for email to you on a monthly basis, then you don't need to worry as much about performance because it'll just show up in your email when it's done. The important criteria to look at here in this existing report are the additional response mode descriptors. Uh, this report is just tracking whether additional response mode descriptors have been recorded or not. So it's looking for all the cases where uh, they've got something in that list. It's not blank and it's not 
just not applicable, not recorded, not reporting. Okay, but our new report, we actually want to look at how often they recorded specifically that they used lights and sirens. So I'm going to take a look at the NEMSIS data dictionary. We reviewed in a previous training that that's available at nemsys.org in the technical resources menu, the data dictionaries and XSD link. I'll bring up the data dictionary here, the web version, and take a look at eResponse.24, additional response mode descriptors. And so what we're interested in is lights and sirens. How often did they use lights and sirens? Well, if I search for the phrase lights and sirens, that's going to give me all three of these choices that have been highlighted. So anytime they went lights and sirens, or they started out silent but upgraded, or they started out with lights and sirens but downgraded, uh, any of those would be picked. So I'm going to go with that. So in my report, in Report Writer, I'm going to change things around a little bit. Instead of saying the response mode descriptor is not blank, I'm going to instead say that it contains lights and sirens. And I can take off this bottom criterion here. And now I've created my own report design where I'm going to track how often calls were run with lights and sirens. Uh, and I've been able to base it on that existing Michigan report to make my job easier. Let's generate this report and give it a little bit to run and see what results we get. Okay, here are my results. So in the data that I have access to, lights and sirens were used on 33 patient care reports in the month of July. I have the other report that we looked at earlier, which was the denominator, which was 82. So to calculate lights and sirens use for the month of July, I would take 33 divided by 82 uh, to get a percentage. So you know, somewhere around 40% of calls had lights and sirens used. So I could track that over time, throw that into an Excel workbook, for example, make a chart, and every month I could schedule this report to come to me, uh, both the denominator and this numerator that I designed, uh, plug those numbers in, get the percentage, and track things over time. Then as I make performance improvement um, changes in the agency, I can track to see if those changes have made a difference. Well, so there we built one report that tracked lights and sirens use over time. We could similarly build reports for these other topics. So we could build that outcome report looking at delays due to an ambulance crash. I'm not going to build the whole report, but I'll show you in the NEMSIS data dictionary that we would look at type of response delay, and we would look at something called vehicle crash involving this unit. So we would want to track how many calls had that type of response delay on them, and we want to make sure that that, um, that, that goes down over time as we change uh, our performance. We could also look at response time and at traffic delays, these two balancing measures. So for traffic delays, we'd look at the same data element type of response delay, and we would look at um, traffic and make sure that we're not seeing an increase in traffic delays as a result of running lights and sirens less frequently. Finally, the response time performance measure, we would be looking uh, at the difference from unit uh, on route to unit arrived on scene. That's the time that they spent on the road traveling and make sure that we're not increasing our response time as a result of not running lights and sirens. So in the report writer, you'll find a data element uh, that can actually calculate the interval between those two times. So you don't have to manually calculate it. And uh, then you can get an average or a median or a 90th percentile uh, on that time interval. So that's how you would use the report writer in the Michigan EMS data system to build a family of reports all around a specific topic. Lastly, let's look at how to schedule the reports. Let's go back to this report that I built. 
Uh, now, I haven't saved it yet. I made some changes to that base report, so let's go ahead and do that. Let's do a save as. And I'll call this uh, Lights and Sirens Usage Performance Measure, whatever you want. And I could put a description in there where additional response mode in descriptors uh, is lights and sirens. I can decide what folder to put it in, and I can decide if I want to share it with any other users. I'll go ahead and save that. Now that my report has been saved, let's schedule it for email. I can go up to the Actions menu and choose Schedule Report. It'll show me any existing schedules that are set up for this report. I can click Add. And I can say that I want this report sent to me on a monthly basis. And I can decide which day of the month it gets sent to me on, maybe, uh, maybe on day seven of each month, every month, eight o'clock in the morning, this is central time zone where image trend is located. And uh, when I want this schedule to be in effect, so this is gonna be in effect for the next year. Well, maybe I want that to be in effect for several years so I can change uh, that end date. I can choose the format that I want the report to be attached to the email in. So I'll go with PDF, but I could also choose CSV or XML. The email subject line and the email message. I can choose other people if I want to uh, send it to their email as well. Uh, I'm just gonna choose myself here. So I've set up a schedule here, once I click Save, that will send this report to me on the seventh day of each month at eight o'clock uh, a.m. Central Time Zone. I'll get that as an email message in my inbox with a PDF attached to it. And so there we've set up that schedule for the report. So as you look at performance improvements, keep in mind the idea of creating a family of performance measures that track uh, perhaps the outcome that you're going for, but as, as well as the outcome, you wanna track the process and the structure uh, of the changes that you're going to make in the agency or in your MCA. In addition to that, identify those balancing measures that you need to track to make sure that the changes that you're making are not having an unintended negative impact in other areas of your performance. Once you've figured out what all those measures are, then you can start building those reports in the report writer. And once you've built each report, you can schedule it to come to you on a regular basis, be it monthly, weekly, or whatever you'd like, and can track performance over time. Uh, so you can make those changes in the agencies and then look at the actual performance and see if those changes made a difference. That wraps up today's training on building reports to support performance improvement efforts. Thank you.